right, so here we have the Ender 3 Max Neo. So this is Creality's latest, greatest versions, and the Max here brings a lot to the table with its large printing volume. And what's great about the Neo version is you get everything you would want with all the little upgrades and updates from Creality, plus this little splash of red, and of course, an all new hot end heat break, which works very well. Now, with that said, there's one thing that I like much better than what this printer comes with, and that's gonna be the build plate. So it comes with the Creality's glass with the perforated coating on it, which the glass itself is great because it stays very flat. And the coating, when it heats up, the prints stick, but when it cools off, they really pop off easily, which for the most part works great. But over time, these beds do wear out, don't stick so well. And another issue is that if you print larger items, they're a lot harder to get off a bed like this because it's not flexible. And there's not an easy way to get it out. You can unclip it and pull it out, but it's just a hassle. And another thing that's quite a big negative about a bed like this is that once your print is done, you have to wait till it completely cools off, which could take a while because most of the time the prints won't come off unless it's completely cold to the touch. And you guys probably noticed we have the upgrade here, which is a PEI sheet for this printer, which I'm pretty excited to upgrade to. Now with this printer being pretty much perfect, there was a couple issues that I found that were needed attention. And this could be just my printer, so yours might not have these issues. But if you guys noticed, we're kind of misaligned. Our bed is tilting down and our x-axis is also misaligned and that's how it came out of the box and because this has dual z-axis rails with the belt on the top that's tethering it it all stays like this unless you know you adjust it so in this video we're gonna do that also and the last thing that kind of bothers me about the spurner is the spool holder and hopefully you guys can see it here pretty well, but it's kind of a wonky spool holder that flops around a lot. It really bothers me because once you put your filament in here, it kind of bends one way and makes the spool want to always go to the side. And the way these work is they just clip into the channel. And I believe that's part of the issue is the tolerances here are not good or something. And plus we got slop in the swivel part also. So we'll go ahead and start with the bit. Let's remove the bill plate and we're just going to unclip these front clips and then pry it up and it slides out the back ones. And again, this thing works pretty good. It is glass, which is a plus because it's really flat, but the PEI is just much better. So this one here is from Pergear and it's actually branded by them. And this is how it comes in in this plastic protector. And you can see on the back here, we got a really big sticker and that's how it installs. So yeah, this is the latest PEI sheets and these are awesome. They have like a nice texture to them and it's a pretty thin, steel sheet that magnetizes to the bottom part which is the mat and it's magnetic and actually on this one it's quite unique because it has the same surface on both sides wow i don't think i've seen that before that's actually a great idea so you have both sides to use by the way these are super durable and last pretty much forever but yeah because this is so thin if you print large models on here you can pop them off really easy because you can just bend this thing it's like a steel sheet so and the magnetic mat is just a big magnet, not too thick. And we have that sticker that we will basically stick it on to our aluminum plate. Now, before we can do that, we need to get rid of these clips that are on the bed. So the Ender 3 Max has this cool little storage on the bottom. And there's actually a little secret storage underneath the channel also. And you can store your little tools in here, which is a really nice touch. So I'm gonna grab the Allen wrench we need to remove these little bolts which hold these clips and they do have a locking nut on the bottom that kind of holds it all together. And I'm gonna put these in the little secret tray. We're gonna simply just undo these guys and put them away for later. So the two front ones are out and you guys can see we have two on the back and they connect exactly the same way as the front. And looks like we do need some pliers to hold the nut as these in the back are a little more stubborn. All right, so one down, one to go. All right. And now we have a nice clean area to stick our magnetic mat to. Now one thing to maybe consider here, and this is 300 by 300, so it's kind of like a big square, but you still want to line it up. So for my printer here, it looks like it's a little bit short on the front and back, which is kind of interesting. And also another thing you might want to consider is see how well this thing sticks to the mat, you know, and where it's most even, if that makes any sense. So. But for the steel sheet, it seems like anywhere you put it, that's where it'll stick, so. But it still has a tendency to drop a little bit over the edge and a little under the edge on most of these kind of beds. So yeah, just kind of calculate that and see how that will work out. So yeah, on my printer here, it looks like that the aluminum bed is about five millimeters bigger than this sheet here. So I think I'm gonna aim to go closer to the front. So let's go ahead and raise the x-axis. 
and I'm gonna bring you guys up so you can see a little better but yeah I'm just gonna probably cover up these holes here and then whatever's left in the back we'll leave it the way it is all right so you want to be pretty careful sticking this on because if you mess it up it'll be extremely hard to you know try to pry this thing back off so make sure you know you line up exactly where you want to be work from one corner out so I'm probably going to choose to go from here that way so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start peeling it on the back side just a little section of it and then we're gonna align it up so you want to line up your front perfectly and then when you're happy you can kind of set it down there on that corner so just make sure everything is lining up everywhere all around so once you're pretty confident that this is where it needs to be we can slowly go underneath and start pulling the rest of the sticker out and we can keep checking here make sure we're still on the right track and looks like we are you want to massage it in as you go so it goes down nice and even but yeah I think we got ours lined up here exactly where we wanted it so yeah I'm actually pretty happy with that and now we can grab our sheet and install it onto the magnet and you guys can see we have you know some aluminum showing on the front and the back and we do have a tab here that I didn't think about which we can still use obviously because it sticks out quite a bit farther but yeah if you want that tab to stick out more maybe go more to the front so but yeah I'm pretty happy with how it is overall also I do want to mention that per gear did include a set of 0.4 nozzles four of them I guess some extras with the PEI sheet which is a nice little thing to have as extra parts so for the next part I want to show you guys how our whole level is off to the frame and so from this angle you can probably see how this side is lower than the other side so our bed is adjusted to the x-axis which is why it's drooping down because the x-axis here is down and this problem is actually much easier to fix than it seems as you just need to adjust this side up a bit and I have a little measuring tool here we can see how much off we are so we got exactly 55 millimeters on this side and 58 on the other so we got three millimeters that we need to go up here now the best way to measure is not to the bed because the bed is secondary to the frame but our x-axis is what's more important to measure so if we bring it down pretty much as far as it goes we can measure it to the frame and see what we get so we got exactly 100 millimeters there and almost 104 or 103 and a half on the other side so yeah again we need to go up about three millimeters on this side that's too low and the way you do that is quite simple well, hopefully you guys can see somewhat here so this is the side that we need to adjust to go up so because this whole system here is tethered with a belt here on the top you know I can just spin the belt and everything goes up and down so because it's all synced, the only way to cut this corner loose, and so you would think that we would need to release this coupler, but that won't work because the lead screw is connected to the belt all the way around. So what we need to release is the idler gear here on top, and that's going to free the lead screw where we can bring the X higher up on the side. So let's grab the Allen wrench we need, and we're just going to loosen these two set screws to this gear. So now when we try to move this, this all won't move with it. It'll just free turn inside. So if we go back down, and hopefully you guys will be able to see this, but what we need to do is just turn the coupler, and this should raise, but this other side's not gonna do anything. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna raise it just a little bit. And now we should be close, so I can go ahead and measure. And again, you wanna measure to the frame down. And actually guys, you wanna have this all the way down, depending on what you're measuring with, because my little measuring tool it doesn't go deep enough, so I should've been lower. If you have a larger ruler, it won't matter. But the whole point here is we're trying to get the same measurement from here down and the other side down. I'm gonna have to tighten my set screws and go down here. All right, so we got 92 here and 93 on this side so we need to go a little more up on the other one so i'm going to loosen my set screws again on the top you guys can't see that but and i'm going to go up just a little bit and then we're going to measure again and since i bumped it off we're at 95 here and 95 so we're really flat now with our x-axis to the frame so now we can go ahead and tighten the set screws up really good so we can lock everything in and we'll flip back to the front we can do the last measurement here we got 92 on this side and 92 and a half on the other so we're still a little bit lower here but it's only half a millimeter which is quite small you know you can perfect it even closer but that's really close already so hopefully that made sense of how to get our X level to the frame and now we can level the bed and it's all gonna straighten up so you might be able to see here how much the bed is kind of going down and this is more straight so let's go ahead and turn the printer on 
and we'll go ahead and go to prepare preheat PLA that's so all we're doing now is just we're gonna manual level the bed and then we're gonna let the BL touch do the rest so under prepare we want to click on auto home And then we're gonna to go to move Z and it's actually 10 millimeters too high. So we need to put that to zero. And that's gonna lower it down. So this printer doesn't have bed leveling assist. So we're gonna to have to do this manually. And we're gonna go back, disable steppers. And now we can manually move everything around. And that side is already too high now. So yeah, now we're just gonna go around and level the plate like you normally would. And this side's too low, which is a good sign with our adjustment. So yeah, this part is pretty easy and quick. I like to go around at least three times to get it pretty close. And looks like we are there. Let's go to the middle. It feels pretty good too in there. Yeah, now that we have our rough level set, we can go to the main page and click on level. And that's going to do a measurement throughout the bed. So yeah, it's going to go 25 points around and then enter the parameters in the printer. And then as it's printing, it's going to compensate. All right, and so now all we got to do is check our offset here and it looks perfect and I think we are done. So if you do need to adjust the Z axis offset, you're going to go to prepare it says here Z axis offset and I already had mine adjusted to minus 2.2. So because we have the CR touch here, it doesn't matter that we changed our bed. It still goes off of the CR touch. So even if we change the thickness here, the probe doesn't really care because it just probes. So if this was thicker or thinner, it'll still be the same offset, if that makes sense. This is why I don't have to bother with mine at all. But yeah, if you do need to go up or down, you can do it from here. And as simple as that, guys, we are done with adjusting our level. So for the last part, let's see what we can do about the spool holder here. First, let's try to tighten up this bolt and see if this helps us any. Okay, so it definitely did help. It's not wobbling around anymore. Let's see how it feels on the printer now. Okay, so it still kind of flops around and I think the problem is, is this rubber foot is too tall. So I'm just going to see if I pull off this rubber part, if the spool will sit better. And sure enough, now it's just hanging in the air so it's not wobbling around once we put something on there. So I guess the rubber foot is too low and it's kind of uh, making the spool holder not be tight on the channel. So yeah, it's actually very stable now which is kind of crazy, but it is just hanging in the air. So what I could do is just trim the foot maybe, which will probably be the best thing to do. Or we can just leave it the way it is, at least for now, and see how it works out. So we do have some Creality filament, and this is just regular white PLA. Let's go ahead and open it up. And I do really like their spools there, so nice looking as they're transparent. Let's go ahead and put it on the spool holder and see what happens. Oh wow, that's so much better. That's crazy. So I think I still need to put that rubber foot in there so it has something to sit on. But yeah, that's so much better. It's not even funny. So let's go ahead and run our filament through. Raise the axes up a bit. And we'll go ahead and manually purge it. And you guys can see it's coming right out. So to test out this new PEI sheet, let's go ahead and print something large. So I got a octopus sliced and it's going to be the full volume, meaning X and Y. We'll see if there's enough room here on this new sheet. Go ahead and start that. And plus it will give us, you know, a good test of how easy it'll pop off once it's printed. But most of all, how well it sticks as there's a lot of separate pieces on this print. And right off the bat, looks like we're perfectly gapped between the bed and the nozzle. And everything looks good. All right, so everything seems to be going perfect. And yeah, we got a perfect gap there. And you guys can see that the Max Neo here has this feature where it dims the screen, which is kind of nice as it extends its life. And yeah, this printer is really cool because it has silent steppers, which is very quiet. All you hear is some fan noise. So I'm pretty excited to see how this octopus is gonna turn out.
All right, so 30 plus hours later, and we have the octopus printed out. And as you guys can see, everything's stuck to the bill plate, which is a good sign, and nothing broke loose, and everything seems to be printed out perfectly. And so the bed has cooled off completely, so this probably will come off. Yeah, it's coming off super easy, and that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen, but yeah, let's go ahead and try to raise the sheet and see what happens. Okay, yeah, it just all broke loose. You guys can see that pretty much, so. Got some tentacles here holding on, barely, but yeah. This PEI sheet works extremely well. And this is why you'd want to upgrade to it, is for this reason exactly, printing large models like this would be a breeze to take off. And you guys saw, this model here definitely has no room for error because if even one of these pieces messed up, it would pretty much be a failure. And even though this is in white, you guys will see that the Ender 3 Max Neo here can put the layers down beautifully. I can get closer here. Yeah, you can see how smooth everything is going down. So, yeah, very impressive on this printer how well it does. Let's go ahead and break this support loose. The filament also seems to be very nice as there's barely any stringing and very consistent. On the bottom, everything turned out pretty good. You guys probably won't be able to see the texture that the build plate leaves, but it's kind of like a texturized look somewhat. It's quite a nice finish. So yeah, again, very impressive on all aspects. Now another thing that I didn't mention is that because we removed the glass and went to the PEI, we did reduce weight quite a bit as glass is quite heavy. So that should definitely help with ringing and vibrations on the Y axis. And overall this kind of build platform is an excellent upgrade to this printer. And if you haven't considered the Ender Max Neo as your next printer, I would highly recommend it. Especially having a build volume of 300 by 300 by 320 gives you quite a lot of volume to work with. So other great features of this printer is we have a filament detector, all metal extruder, CR touch standard, new style heat break. I love this little drawer on the bottom. The splash of red, very nice. Very clear and bright screen with a great UI. Dual Z axis tethered with the belt on top. It has the TMC2208 silent steppers, which make the printer quiet overall. And not to mention the easy assembly and quite simple to get started, which is great for newcomers. So if you guys are interested in this printer, I'm gonna have some links in the description, check it out. If you wanna upgrade to a PEI sheet, I'll also have a link for that. And if you guys wanna check out the full unboxing and review of this printer, I'll have some links here at the end. And also check out the 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. And if you guys did enjoy this video then hit that like button and also stay tuned as I have more 3d printing stuff coming up and one more thing before I go if you guys want to support me with my new channel called just print where eventually I'll be moving all my 3d printing videos there as for now it's just mostly bits and pieces but would appreciate it if you check it out and as always thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one peace